Hello everyone, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is, is a plotting tutorial using Matplotlib in Python. Now in the last two tutorials we were looking at subplots and in the last tutorial we actually saw how you can make subplots using subplot to grid which is actually a slightly easier way uh, to make things done as with respect to subplots because they introduce the grid notation and it's very easier. And now in this example, I will be talking about, I mean, in this video, I'll be talking about grid spec or grid specifications. There is actually an option called as a grid spec available in matplotlib that which you can use to create uh, uh, plots with a little more of a control. These, this is actually another alternative way to go about with uh, subplot to grid. Okay, there's subplot to grid and this is another option. So let's get started with. So I have I have my code written over here. So I'm just going to copy paste this and I'll walk you guys through what's happening. Okay, so I paste this and I uncomment this part of the code. What was that? Yeah. So as usual, first there are actually there are going to be three parts in this video. The first uh, first I'll just talk about the simple uh, plot sub subplot with no uh, figure spans, no plot spans. So first what you do is just as usual create a figure, figure object, okay, figure handle and then in a, what you do is you just create, you use a grid spec from matplotlib, import a class, import the grid spec class as gs, okay, you can, you can just, you have to import this, you can have it imported as any short name you want and then over here create a grid spec object called as gs1. Okay, so GS is equal to grid spec and you specify the number of rows and number of columns. Okay, this defines your overall configuration. And now once you define that, this GS is kind of like an array. So instead of writing the grid spec every time, every time, okay, I mean, sorry, instead of writing the subplot to grid every time and specifying the configuration again and again every time, all you can do is just type the access num access name and then type plt.subplot and inside that subplot, instead of giving the notation, the configuration notation, you can directly write grid spec, the grid spec object and then the coordinate of the figure and that is it. As simple as simple as that. Now if you do this, but now you do this, you're actually creating a two by two, uh, I mean, uh, a figure having four plots arranged in a two row, two column configuration. And in this plot will go to the zeroth row and zeroth column. Okay, so this is how it will happen. And similarly, this will go, this one will go to the zeroth row first column. This plot will go to the first row and zeroth column. And this plot will go to uh, the first row first column. So when I run this particular piece of code, there we go. We get this subplot, we got this option over here. I mean, we got this figure over here with four subplots one, two, three, and four. Perfect. Okay. And the, re the reason why this is slightly advantageous is because instead of writing subplot to grid every time and then passing the configuration, I mean, the grid configuration every time, you just write this only once and then it's automatically taken care of in this. Whenever you use the GS1, the grid spec object over here, it sounds more like an array. And when you use this, it's automatically taken care of. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment out this, comment out these lines. And then I'll talk about the next option, the next option here. Here, the figure, the plots will have rows, rows and column spans. So let me copy this and paste it over here. And I will uncomment this. So I'll walk you through now. Here I'm creating another figure and in this figure the plots have row column spans. As usual, create a figure with a figure object and then I create a grid spec object. Here I'm setting the number of rows to be three and number of columns to be three. Okay, and here what I'm actually doing is I can use the notations to actually span along the rows or columns. So here what I'm actually doing is if I put GS2 within bracket zero comma uh, zero colon three. What I'm actually doing is I'm setting the f plot to be in the zero row, spanning all the three columns. So this way it will be only along the zero row, only along this row zero. Okay. So this will be a horizontal uh, plot. I can use the I can use the you know slice spli slicing notations of the arrays directly inside for the in inside to make it for the row span and column span and this is actually a much uh, sorry a bit more elegant when compared to the subplot to grid option over here over there where you have to specify the row span and column span here it's a little bit elegant in this regard and that's one of the reasons why 
this is a slightly better option to go about with. Bridge pick is actually a slightly better option to go about with. So you can write 0, 0, 0 is to 3, or you can just write 0, comma colon. That is that is same as above. And then this uh, the figure 2, what I've done here is I've just pla placed the figure in uh, uh, row 1, and then I'm spanning only two columns. Columns were 0 and 2, 0 and 1. Okay, which which I can actually uh, conveniently write it as uh, one comma colon is to minus one, which is same as above. Okay, and similarly, I I mean, on the next plot over here, next plot over here, I'm uh, writing this, uh, spanning this in rows one and two, and I'm just keeping this in only in column two, column two. Okay, so this will actually this will span the uh, row, it'll, this will span two rows, and this these two figures over here, these are in the second row. I mean second row they occupy the first column zeroth column and then the first column so you'll get uh, so this figure will have actually this figure will actually have five plots in it so if you run this there we go our first subplot this is our first subplot this is our second subplot third subplot fourth subplot and fifth subplot sweet all of this is made using grid span grid specs and the, and the advantage of this method is that uh, the row specifying the row spans and column spans are much much easier and uh, now, now I'm just going to comment out this particular piece of code, and then I'm going to I uh, talk about the last piece of code today, which is having multiple grid specs. Instead of having uh, instead of having just one grid spec object for a particular plot, you can actually have two or more grid specs of your choice, two or more grid specs in the same figure object. Okay. I mean, whenever you create a figure, you can actually create multiple grid spec objects. It's not necessary that you have to have only one. You can create multiple. So that's what I'm doing over here. So this figure has multiple grid specs. So here's an example. Uh, I create this grid spec GS3. GS3. I'll talk about, and then since I want to keep multiple grid specs, I have to specify the left, uh, left side, right side orientations. Uh, orientation the and the horizontal spacing and the vertical spacing so i'm going to mention i mean i'm going to mention uh, mention them up so when i say gs3 dot update okay what i do is actually i just tell it to be slight 0 0.05 or 5 percent away from the left and the right side margin has to be um 48 percent of the total width of the figure and the horizontal spacing is uh, point, uh 5% so if there is any other grid uh, grid spec i want to keep any other figure that a uh, plot I want to make, okay, there will be a five uh, person spacing between them, five person spacing between them, you know, with the overall length, with respect to the overall length, and then these uh, these lines are just just like as usual, just like the thing we saw above. You specify the axis and you specify the uh, rows and I mean the row position and column position and the span accordingly, span accordingly. So this will actually span two rows and three columns. This uh, this uh, plot uh, will span two columns and it will be rare in just row two. And this will actually span. Uh, this will not span any. Uh, this, this is just a single plot. In this way, you uh, created uh, a grid spec with three plots in it. Okay, which I will just going to comment up, comment it up, and show you. First, I'm just going to comment this up. And at the bottom, I've removed this tight layer because it threw an error. So if I run this. You will get only a grid spec with only three plots like this one. So if I were to copy this, I, which I actually done over here, I copied this and pasted it over here, and it is renamed and I gave a new name for it called as GS4. GS, I mean the grid spec object is GS4, and the axis plots are actually AX. I mean the subplots are actually AX4, AX5, AX6. Okay. So if I were to uncomment these lines. And uh, let's see. Comment out these line. Comment out these lines. Check this out. When I run this. I get only. I get the. I mean, grid spec only on my right. Okay, and with the three figures. And now, if I were to uncomment all of them, uncomment this also. Check this out. I'll be getting six uh, subplots in this uh, two in this figure. And if you notice. These three on my left are actually from one grid spec, uh, grid spec object, whereas these three plots are actually from another grid spec. This way, I can use multiple grid specs to create multiple plots. Well, multiple plots. The why do you want to do this? Is just to make sure that uh, 
uh, um, just to make sure that if you want to pl make some plots very tight with it, very tightly packed and closely packed, you can use grid spec options. Earlier in the versions, you can use grid specs just like that. But over here, when you're using multiple grid specs, the main reason is, is to make sure that your plots are very tightly packed, packed with next to each other. And if you want to know more in detail about how you can actually do with grid specs, there is this web page over here from Matplotlib where they mentioned about grid specs, subplot and, and subplot to grid. In the last two, like two or three videos, I'm actually be, I'm actually trying to replicate the example they mentioned over here. Uh, that's why just in my, uh, that's why in my, uh, uh, that's why in my programs I mentioned this, mentioned this line explicitly, explicitly. So here they mentioned about how to use subplot to grid and the subplot to grid option. They also mentioned about grid spec. There's another option called as uh, subplot spec, wherein you can create uh, you can create grid spec objects from uh, subplot. Uh, I mean, you can create grid spec objects from subplot spec. I mean, subplot spec. This is actually slightly complex. It is actually slightly longer, but it's still possible. And then you can actually nest grid spec and subplot spec to create multiple plots like these. And there's another option over here wherein uh, you have the same grid spec option, a uh, single option, but uh, one of the figures can be made a little longer or shorter. Usually we we'll, usually we prefer to, uh, I mean, usually if we increase the row span or column span of the plots to make them bigger. But on the other hand, uh, to make it much simpler, you can actually do this kind of a stuff wherein you just create a single grid spec, you just increase the width and height ratios of the plots and thereby making thereby making them uh, making them one of these plots bigger or bigger or longer or wider or broader when compared to the other ones so if you want you can actually go to this website and have a look at this i'm keeping this in the my uh, i'm keeping this uh, web page actually in the folders I mean the file so if you look at the top of the file they have this web link you can actually go to this website and have a look at these tutorials i mean look at this this is for advanced users for most of our Normal plotting, uh, the grid spec options one and two, for examples one and two will be more than sufficient. But if you want to pack more and more plots together, this uh, go to this website web page and look at those examples. That will be my that will be very useful. Now that's all I have for you all in this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time in another interesting video. Till then, take care.